Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. This is my weekly show where you see what I got done and what I'm working on and what is coming up. So this is a double header episode. Last weekend was my family's uh, big yearly annual open house Christmas party and um, yeah, I didn't do a lot that weekend. Sunday was, Sunday was uneventful. I cleaned my destroyed house and we had like, I don't know, 13 kids just just screaming in a train back and forth across the house. It was pretty, it was fantastic, great time. Um, but it meant that, uh, yeah, I didn't get a lot of film last weekend, so I didn't get my on the paint table done. Um, and I'm gonna catch up with the double header now. So I've finished 50 models over the last two weeks, uh, finished, or uh, painted up all of my God tier stuff, caught up on all of my Song of Ice and Fire stuff, um, finished off the beautiful Arch Revenant um, from Loon Curse that Ryan Quinlan sent me, um, and uh, got some more stuff sort of assembled and primed. So let's show you what's getting done and what is coming up. So first things first, here's that gorgeous um, Arch Revenant Mini for my uh, Sylvaneth painted up. I didn't do him with detachable wings, I just wanted to do him with like the standard sort of build. He's got a nice gossamer look to those wings. Um, I did a big basic base coat with my airbrush uh, and then went in and painted all the details afterwards. A gorgeous miniature. I don't know when he's gonna be available for retail, but um, he's super handy. He makes Kurnoth Hunters really, really good, which I have some more Kurnoth Hunters to build and paint as well. I wanna do a unit with the swords to go with my sides and my arrows. So I have one of each, basically. Cause I don't like to skew. I just wanna do one of one of each individual unit type. Um, and uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be leading that posse of dudes. Probably surrounded by the Arrow Boys and then sending up the, um, the fighters to go and slam into stuff later on. Really nice model, tons of fun to paint. Uh, just with like a ghostly kind of uh, inlay in his shield there with a little bit of uh, what was it a white mix of old hawk turquoise and then um, some goss flare on all the skin blended up to white uh, and then I think I can't remember what's silver I, it's stormhost silver over top of whatever the, the current copper is <laughs> it might even be old beaten copper like highlighted up and it's a scale 75 green um, over an old snot green for the um, the highlights to all the green and stuff so he is all done up Ready to lead some Colonel Hunters into the fray. Uh, speaking of frays and uh, songs and ice and fire, I finished up uh, the rest of my Starks. I now have one of every Stark unit painted. It's uh, it's a pretty cool feeling, actually. I finished up my Tully Cavaliers. Um, these were done with that really nice uh, color shift stuff from Green Stuff World. Uh, over top of um, just a gloss black for their cool kind of like fishy colored like lacquered armor and uh, the rest of it just then I base coated uh, old chair on granite with my, my airbrush blended up to a bit of beige uh, and then did all the details and stuff over top of it painted up Ciro Pharrell the last of the Stark Heroes 2 box that I hadn't painted yet he's actually kind of cool now with the new 1.5 update to uh, Song of Ice and Fire uh, you don't have to use Arya I don't think to take him anymore and he's he's like worth taking he's, he's two points of Pretty awesome. <laughs> he gives people like basically like sword trainings. So they're better, better at fighting, and then um, has an order to make people minus one to hit when they attack him as well. He's pretty rad. Uh, I've also painted up uh, Heroes One for the Night's Watch. So, oops, what's John doing there? He he came along for a ride apparently. Along <laughs> well, the rest of the heroes, um, and uh, that means Donald Noyle. Uh, we've got um, Gren and uh, Pipar. We have uh, Corn Half Hand. We have the, the man, the legend, Alistair Thorne, with his uh, double double fighting sticks here. Uh, going back to King's Landing, not being bleed with a zombie hand. And then um, Othel Yarek, the first builder, who's actually a really cool NCU commander as well. So I'm pretty jazzed about this. I've played a couple games with them so far. Uh, I got my um, my recruiter painted as well as a nice one-point attachment. And then I painted up my crossbows, which are just like, oh, they're so good. They're just so good. I. They're just so good. Like, I don't know why you would never, they're just the best. <laughs> My favorite sub point in the game, maybe. Uh, with Piper, they become amazing, amazing. Uh, but, um, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use my, my scorpions anymore now that I have these because they're just an amazing nine point doodly do unit that can shoot everything from 12 way, shift a bunch. Uh, how much wider shooting arc just because of the way the nature of the base, like, they're just way wider across. So they have a bigger arc of fire than the, um, the scorpion does and they can shift before they shoot as well so just a fabulous unit really fun to paint and uh and really fun to play with as well so they're all done and that was oh geez 12 uh, 24 models for something by some fire and one for your sigmar and then all this for god tier another 24 models for god tier basically the new star set um with morgan and naya in it and i paint up the quartz slings the banners uh the undead servanty dudes in the banner over there and then the last two expansions I had painted yet, which is Half Tusk and his Froglodytes. Possibly the greatest name for minions ever, Froglodytes. Um, and then over here I painted up uh, 
this guy's uh, Black Jaw and the Unburned Raiders, which are like the orc dudes. And they have kind of a Lord of the Ringsy uruk -hai orc vibe to them, but I did them in like Warcraft orc green, basically, to, to make them, I don't know, I just want them to pop and stand out. I like bright colors in this game. Uh, all these are done from various airbrush base coats, uh, and then blended up through a bunch of other colors. So like, for instance, he was done with the fang, blended up through, I'm pretty sure, the fang mixed with white. Uh, Naya's folk were all starting off with some hawk turquoise, blended up through white, and then um, a, a various grays. I think I started chaired on granite over here up to like a lighter gray, and then washed some parts of it down with like uh, the, the was it Scaven Blade Dinge? It's not Storm Vermin Fur, it's Scaven Blade Dinge, I think, like a, a brown gray. And then um, some, some airbrush of like a very pale blue for the fire and stuff that I then blended up to white as well. So made them look like I want them to look like the Draugr from. Uh, what should I call it from Sky, Skyrim, and I think I kind of achieved that, which I'm pretty happy with. So I mean, and even like, uh, there's just great fantasy minis. Like you've just got some really cool fantasy minis here. Kind of no matter what, I I love these new um, uh, God tier minis because they're just like, they're they're cool fantasy models for my fantasy monster collection, regardless. And some big like here we monster pieces as well, kind of regardless of um, how much God tier we play. We just have like a ton of really cool fantasy models on top of it, and they're all nice and durable because they're all in uh, sort of board game PVC. So there it is, 50 models, 24 plus 26, painted up, yeah, 50 models. And as I'm a glutton for punishment, of course, I immediately just decided to, to make more projects for myself. So the only thing I hadn't painted from my, my unpainted pile um, of, uh, of Song of Ice and Fire stuff was was these folk, was my uh, my conscripts, which actually in the 1.5 rules are pretty freaking cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use them a lot more now. The D3 heal and far fewer casualties from uh, panic bombing and stuff like that mean that they're they're able to camp an objective and for four points, God bless them, they will. I'm I'm quite tempted to take a unit of these in every army now uh, to offset my sworn brother cost um, and have like an objective camper, maybe to just kind of bodyguard the uh, the crossbows and stuff too. So I'm gonna paint them up. Uh, you can see they're already airbrushed with some good old P3 coal black, the greatest of colors, <laughs> and then their bases uh, painted with some dried bark. Everything else just uh, primer black right now. And then going the other way, I got all the new neutral stuff for the most part, um, which is Neutral Heroes 2, uh, which gives you finally um, a non Hand of the King version of Brienne and uh, Braun. This Brienne is fantastic. Like, forget the fact that it's a Song of Ice and Fire Manager again for a minute. Like what a cool female night miniature. She's just she's just awesome. She's an awesome miniature. I'm really like I have a brand painted already. It's it's not nearly as cool as this one. I'm totally painting this one like I think probably almost first. I mean I might paint Walter Frey first, but she's just such a cool sculpt. I love the on guard with the long sword. It's so cool. Uh, and then the bra mini is also really nice. I actually think it's the pose is a bit cooler than the the shield one that you get uh, in the Hand of the King pledge. And he's actually armed. He looks like a stormtrooper too, which I think is kind of cool. I use Braun quite a bit with my cutthroats. Um, just recently, now that he's actually unlocked as like a legal tournament character, so I'm playing some practice games with him. So he hunted up my Boltons quite a bit. Uh, and unfortunately, my Hand of the King one, his sword snapped. And I keep breaking it whenever I touch the unit, so I'm probably going to paint this one just so I stop breaking my, my limited edition one. Some of the sand here is coming off as I pick these guys up. Uh, then we got Darian Harris, Walder Frey, the, the, the greatest, with, with the most kids probably of anyone in this, in this uh, universe, except maybe, uh, what's his face, gross um, craster. Uh, Darren Harris, he's another commander option along with the goat, uh, which is the goat of Harrenhal. Uh, what's his name? Something Hote. I can't remember his first name. Something G Hote. <laughs> Uh, and these are two new NC, or, um, commander options, and they're both table commanders for neutrals, which is kind of cool. Uh, we got Tycho Nestoris, the Iron Banker, who's awesome. He's only four points, and he lets you heal up to five wounds any time, or sort of any turn across the two units. Um, and then Walder, who's a five points uh, NCU, who just he just turns off units. He's awesome. He backs the winning side. I I kind of love Walder Frey, even though he's a gross old man. And betrays everybody and instigates their wedding. Uh, and then, of course, Jack and Nagar, the Faceless Man. Uh, he uh, he has three cards in here. He has a Stark only card where you can use him as an attachment if you take Arya for the enemy. Um, and what happens is when you kill his unit, because he goes to an enemy unit, you get to pick an enemy NCU or um, basically you owe a name. And so you get to pick an enemy NCU or attachment and just kill them because he goes off and assassinates because it's, it's assumed that you're rescuing him from like the bad guys. Uh, he has a five point uh, NCU who's just bananas who basically targets you every turn and can assassinate somebody on a six just kills anybody. <laughs> and then he has um, 
a uh, another attachment version, which I can't remember off the top of my head. He's like a a, a man attachment where like, oh no, if if he dies, sorry, if um uh, once per game you attach him to a unit and one of your other dead NCUs can turn into him, he takes a new name. So like if you lose your I don't know your commander on the table or whatever, you get him back basically by killing Jack Nagar because <laughs> he just takes that guy's name instead. Um, and that's my Song of Ice and Fire stuff I got coming up. I'm gonna you can see I prime them slightly differently. The plan, of course, with that is that I'm going to um, use some contrast paints probably on these guys for some lighter colors. Uh, the Night's Watch need a darker undertone, so they got prime black instead. And then I got a box of Stormcrow Mercs, the Stormcrow Captain. I can't find them in the app yet, so I don't actually think they're out yet, but they're available for sale here in Canada. So I grabbed a box. They are an amazing five-point line troop for neutrals. Um, Dario has a bunch of cards of proc off Stormcrows, so I'll probably take at least one unit in my Boltons and maybe try him out as a commander, because they're pretty, pretty rad. Uh, and if I stick him in my unit cutthroats, if I take, um, what's his face? Darren Harris, my commander, put him in my cutthroats. They become a Stormcore unit too, so just my Flademan won't, and there's some synergy there, which is kind of neat. Uh, then I got, uh, we've been playing a lot of uh, Infinity. We're kind of winding down in three here at the studio right now. I'm um, just kind of playing with our armies we haven't played with in a while, and I'm going to sort of add some stuff to probably just get the get the get the last little bits going uh so i got tai shing um my hulang shock troop and my mo wang for my invincible army I need to paint up uh, i'm gonna be doing an echo bravo he's my favorite echo bravo the one that comes in para from the side basically parachute style with a with a light rocket launcher that guy's a link team hunter and then pavel and a stray lock for my um tack army and my kill son with a mark 12 which i'm really excited to try out actually in the the baby little harris link he can form um, in my, uh, my, whatchamacallit, my Sparrow Core. So, there is my stuff coming up. So there we go, uh, end of this week, I'm at 796 models painted, I think, out of 886. So basically, there's like three weeks left in the year, and I got 90 models to go. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna get really close. Uh, I'm actually not stressing out over it, because if I do it, th like, it's just gonna be higher again next year if I get to 886, and... I just want to enjoy what I'm painting right now. It's the end of the year. I'm catching up on projects. I'm painting stuff I like. I'm not going to stress out over it. If I hit it, I hit it great. If I don't hit it, I mean, I still painted like 800 and change models this year, plus all the train I painted. So I'm still over 1,000 models painted this year, which is a lot of interest and a lot of work. So <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next week to see what I get done. Till next time, I'm Ash. Definitely later. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications of when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys and of course I will continue doing it as long as I can.